Okay, today we're going to be talking about independent and dependent events. So we're talking about probability still. So when we're looking at these, we are actually working on an 8th grade standard just because probability is pretty easy. We covered all of the 7th grade standards yesterday, which was to find um, a simple probability of a simple event, um, to find the likeliness of the event happening and the probability of not. So now we have to delve into it a little bit harder um, when we're talking about this 8th grade standard. So a single event, simple event is what we discussed yesterday, and it's a basic probability. It's one thing that happens, so when rolling a die, so if it's um, getting a number less than 2, well there's one side that's less than 2 and there's six sides to the die. Choosing a card at random, well if the card is, if you want a diamond, what's the probability of getting a diamond? Well, there are four suits, so you have a one in four chance of getting a, a diamond. Spinning a spinner, it depends upon how many sections there are in the spinner. But let's say there are six equal sections to the spinner um, and three of them are pink. You have a one or three and six chance, which equals a one half chance of getting um, a pink section. Flipping a coin again, it's a one in two chance. So that's the simple probability. That's what you want over the total number of options. Pretty simple, hence the name simple probability, simple event. Well, now we're going to be talking about compound events. And a compound event is when there's two or more events happening. There are two kinds of compound events. There are independent events and there are dependent events. Now, independent events are when two or more events happen without affecting the, the future outcomes of events. So if you take a card out and you put that card back in before pulling in the next one, or if you pull a marble out of a bag, but you put that marble back in the bag before um, drawing another one, or the fact that like flipping a coin doesn't affect the spinning a spinner. Um, that one's um, actually mutually exclusive, but still they're independent events where the events do not affect the outcomes of the future events. So the biggest thing is when you see, when you see the phrase without ref affecting, you are going to be seeing the word replacing or the phrase with replacement. Those are the two phrases that you are going to be paying attention for, looking for as you're doing this. So um, he's replacing the marble afterwards or he's with replacement. So, or you're putting it back before pulling in another, another one out. Dependent events, that means what happens the first time absolutely does affect what happens the second time. So when you take a marble out of a bag, then obviously if you don't put the marble back in, then it's going to affect the number of marbles in the bag. So let, let's think about this is my, 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 my bag of marbles. And let's say I've got four pink ones in the, in the bag and I've got three blue ones in the bag. Well, how many total number of um, marbles, and let's put two more, two green ones in here. How many marbles do I have in the bag at this point? Well, I've got nine marbles in the bag. So let's say I take a marble out. How many marbles do I now have in the bag? I now have eight marbles in the bag, not nine marbles in the bag. I've got one less marble. That means the number of outcomes is affected. Remember, the number of outcomes is the total number of possibilities. Well, instead of having nine possible, possible options to pick from now, I only have eight because I have less outcomes. With your partner, you're going to be looking at this worksheet. Okay, so you are going to determine if it is a simple event, which means there is one thing that happens. And if so, then you are going to write an S in the box, in this box. You are going to determine if it's dependent events, which means if the two things that happen affect one another, and then you're going to write a D in the box, or if they are independent events, which means they have no effect on one another, the events, and then you're going to put an I in the box. Please use a capital I so it doesn't look just like a line. So again, I roll two dice. What is the probability that I rolled a pair of, pot, pair of fives? Does the probability of one die landing on a five affect the probability of the other die landing on a five? Well, no. So, is it a simple event? No, because there's more than one event. 
are they dependent upon one another? Will one of the answers change? Will the number of outcomes of one of them change because of the other one? No, therefore it is an independent event. Let's do another one before you finish up. You have a bag of jelly beans, 15 are green. What is the probability of pulling out a green, eating it, and then pulling out a jelly bean that is not green? So, have you put that jelly bean back in the bag? Well, no, you've eaten it. You can't put it back in the bag. So you have one less jelly bean in the bag, correct? Yes, that means you have one less chance of getting a jelly bean, which would be a dependent event. I want you to do the rest of this before you move on. Okay, you should have finished that worksheet and determined if each example is a simple event, an independent event, or a dependent event. Okay, now we're gonna talk about how you actually find the probability of the events. All I wanted you to do was put the D, the S, or the I in, or in the, each of the boxes because that's where you needed to start. Now you actually need to talk about the, the probability of these events. So to find the probability of independent events, that means events that don't affect one another, all you simply do is find the probability of the first one and you multiply it times the probability of the second one. So for example, there's a bag filled with 10 marbles, six red, one blue, and three green. What is the probability of randomly picking out a red marble? Okay, so a red marble is gonna be six out of 10, which can be reduced to what? three out of five. Okay, then what is the probability of randomly picking out a red marble and then a green marble after replacing the first? So this one is the probability of a red. So I've taken the red marble out, I've put the red marble back in. So now I'm gonna shake up the bag and pull a green one out. So now I pull, so the green one, well how many green marbles are in the bag? Well there are three green marbles in the bag. And how many total marbles are in the bag? Ten marbles are in the bag. And so to find the probability of both of these things happening, you're gonna multiply those events. So the probability of the red and the green would be three-fifths times three-tenths. Now, this is why we started with fractions and we started with um, decimals and we know all of these operations. I'm gonna to look to see if I can cross-cancel. Can't cross-cancel anything. Multiply across the top, three times three is nine and five times 10 is 50. So there's a 9 fiftieths chance of randomly picking out a red marble and then a green marble as long as you put the green marble back in first. So if I were to ask you then to change this to a decimal, you could divide nine divided by 50. If I'd asked you to change it to a percent, you could change it to a percent. If I asked you to write this as a ratio, you could write it as a ratio. You could also write it as words. There's a nine in 50 chance of getting a red marble followed by a green marble. Now, what happens if they are dependent events? So this one is where it affects the probability of the next. So when I say without replacing the first, when I'm not replacing it, the number of marbles in the bag decreases after the first situation. So when we're talking about finding the probability, we have to think about the second probability a little differently. So the probability of red is not gonna change. I've got six total marbles in the bag, and there are 10 total marbles, or sorry, what I want, which is six, and what the total number is 10. And so this is gonna be a three-fifths chance of drawing a red marble. Now the green one, after removing the red marble, there is no longer 10 marbles in the bag. How many marbles are in the bag now? There are now nine marbles in the bag. And what about pulling out a green marble now? Well, how many green marbles are there? There are three green marbles, and that can reduce to one third. So what is the probability of getting a red, then a green, without the replacing first, the probability of getting a red is three-fifths, and I multiply that times the probability of getting a green after removing the red, 
and now I can cross cancel, multiply across, which is one, and multiply across the bottom. It's a one-fifth chance. There's a much better chance of getting a red marble followed by a green marble after removing or a, after removing the red marble because there's one less chance and one more um, opportunity. Okay, so let's try this one. There's a bag filled with 10 marbles. I like to draw my marbles, by the way, because what happens if you lose your marbles? All right, so here's my marbles, and I've got six red. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if you're not writing in um, color like I am, you could always use the letter R. There's one blue and three green. Okay. What's the probability of picking a red and then a red and then a blue marble? So the question is, it didn't specify, but I'm going to assume they're not replacing here. So we're going to assume there's no replacement. They're not replacing it. They're not putting the marble back in the bag each time. So the probability of getting a red marble. Well, there's six red marbles out of a 10. That means there's a 3 fifths chance. Now, what is the chance of getting a red marble now? Well, let's think about this. There is no longer this red marble. I have just pulled it out. So how many marbles are now in my bag? Well, there's now one, two, three, four, five red marbles. And how many total marbles are there? There are now nine red marbles in my bag. And this can't be reduced. What about a blue after the red and the red? OK, well, so I've just pulled another red marble out of my bag. So how many blue marbles are in my bag? There is one blue marble in my bag. And how many total marbles are in my bag? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are now eight marbles in my bag. So what is the probability of pulling a red marble? Well, the first red marble, it's three-fifths. Then a red marble, and the, the probability of the second is going to be five-ninths, then a blue marble, and that's going to be one-eighth. Now, something you might have noticed would have been um, ten, nine, and eight. You can notice if you haven't reduced this one, the denominator is going to go down each time. So that is some, sometimes a hint for you as to whether or not you are doing it correctly, is notice that the bottom, the denominator, is going down by one step, assuming you're only pulling one item, especially when you're not replacing. So how do you multiply three numbers? Well, let's cross cancel first. So the fives cancel with the fives, and the three cancels with the nine, and it goes in three times. So I've got a one left on the top, and a 24 left on the bottom, because eight times three is 24. There is a one in 24 chance of getting a red marble, then a red marble, and then a blue marble in that order out of this bag of 10 marbles. So go back to this uh, worksheet. You're going to now find the actual probability of each of these events. So remember, you're going to find the probability of the first event and multiply it times the probability of the second event. So when I roll two dice, does the, ans the, the, the answer on one die affect the, the probability of the other die? No, because we've already determined they are independent events. So I need you to tell me, what's the probability of finding rolling a 5 on the first die? Well, there, how many 5s are there on the die? There's only one 5, and how many total 6s are there? Or total sides are there? There are 6 sides. So there's a 1 out of 6 chance of getting a 5. Well, on the other die, there's also a 1 out of 6 chance of getting a die. And we simply multiply those two events together Nothing I can cross cancel. There's a 1 in 36 um, chance of getting a pair of fives. Let's look at these spinners. Again, does the spinner, the, the answer on the spinner, affect the answer on this spinner? No. Okay. So each spinner below is, is spun once. What is the probability 
that the result will be a 3. Well, how many 3's are there? There's 1, 2, 3. There are 3 out of 8 options on the first spinner and a consonant. Remember, a consonant is the opposite of a vowel and that means it's not A and not E. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are 6 out of 8 that are consonants and you are combining those and you need to cross cancel so this was going to be three fourths and is there anything else that I can cross cancel? No. So I multiply across the top three times three is nine and eight times four is thirty-two so there's a nine and thirty-two chance of getting a three and a consonant. Let's look at this box uh, that contains some pencils. So a box contains six yellow, two black, and four green pencils. What's the probability of pulling two green pencils? Well, let's see here. <clears throat> so kind of similar to the marbles, I've got one, two, three, four pencils, I've got two black pencils, and I've got six yellow pencils. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, what's the probability of two, pulling two green? Well, what's the probability of pulling the first green one? So how many total pencils are there? There's a total of 12. And how many of them are green the first time you pull it? Well, that's a 4 out of 12 chance, which that can be reduced to a 1 third chance. 1 out of 3. Now the second time, there's no longer this green pencil in there. So there's now a 3 out of how many chance? three out of, how many pencils are there now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are now eleven pencils instead of being twelve. So this is the probability of getting a green pencil the second time. And again, I simply cross cancel. My threes can cancel with the threes and so I have a one eleventh chance of getting a pencil the second time or actually getting two pencils both times. You need to find the rest. This is your homework, so you need to have letters in each box and you need to have probabilities for each one. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.